G'day, welcome back to the Anvil modeling tutorial. I'm Andrew Price, and this is where we're at. We've got uh, what looks like half an anvil um, made out of cheese. So in this part, we are going to be adding sharp corners to it, which I know sounds absolutely thrilling, but it's actually a very important part of the modeling process because when you add this subsurf modifier, like we have done, um, you can see that it rounds everything off. And so the initial reaction when you first use the subsurf modifier is you go uh, like, oh, well, I don't want it to be all smooth. This looks a lot closer to, you know, what I want, which is, you know, the finished result, which is sharp edges. So I remember when I first um, started modeling and using Blender, I was, yeah, I went through times where I would go like, ah, forget the, the subsurf and I would delete it and I would try and round everything by hand, but that creates a lot of problems because for example, um, say you just wanted to model everything and not use the subsurf, you would have to try to, you know, round this edge here because this is way too sharp of an edge and you can see that in our original, it's catching light on that edge there. So you would have to try to round that by doing something like a bevel, you know, um, but then later on, if you wanted to, I don't know, change the top here and add something else, you've now got all these extra vertices to deal with. So it's not as simple as it was before. So it is a much better idea to keep it lean, which is what we've got now, like a pretty lean looking mesh that gives you a lot of control, um, but then add in a subsurf, which gives you the control of, you know, how high resolution do you want the final model to be? You can just turn it up or down. Um, so. That's why so many people use the subsurf modifier because it's just just makes everything simple. Most people um, expect it. Um, so making sharp edges. <laughs> so um, so th there, there's a couple of ways you could do it. The first way is one that I don't recommend. A lot of people say you should do it, but doesn't really work. Um, and that is to add a crease. So you can add a crease just by hitting Shift E and then just pulling the mouse outward. Um, and you can see that when you do that, the edge that you selected um, now has this pink outline to it. Um, so when I drag that all the way out, um, oops, as you drag it, you'll see in the bottom, the bottom left-hand corner as you drag, it's, um, it's giving the, what do you call it? <laughs> it's giving it a number. So it's at plus one right now. Um, so with it turned all the way up, you can see that Yes, we've, we've fixed the problem of it being too smooth, but we also don't have any control over how round we want to go. Because if you were to go in between that, like, I don't know, to say 0.5, you can see that, yes, there's a crease, but it's almost like it's it's not fully, like you don't have full control over this. You, you might try and bring it up. It, But honestly, like the crease, generally whenever I use a crease, it's just to make it maximum crease. It doesn't really work in the in-between values. So... Uh, the better method, and the method that I'll show you right now, um, oh, hang on a second. I think the uh, watch thought I said, hey Siri, and then it just, um, just started listing everything I was saying in a big, long, uh, request list. Anyway, um, okay, so I mentioned, oh yeah, so <laughs> getting rid of the crease. So if you, if you want to know what your edge actual crease is, and you can just find it in the, uh, properties bar there. Anyways, a better method, the method that I will show you and the method that I recommend, if I don't get interrupted by my watch again, um, is to add in a loop cut. Um, because the reason that this is so smoothed out is because it is averaging out this huge area. Okay, so it's averaging out the three, to, to make this corner here, it is going from there and it's averaging it all the way down like that okay so that's why that edge there is so smoothed off and it looks um ridiculous but watch this if we add a loop cut okay drag it there and then we change the position and pull this up to say something there right now it only has to go from there to there to there so it's that big smoothed off edge there is is fixed right um and if we want to smooth it even more uh, sharpen it even more then we would add another loop cut like that and this is the method, um, I believe there's even a term for it, like a proximity loop, I think it's called. Um, but yeah, it, it enables you to control the subsurf. So I've now, I've got the best of both worlds. I've now got the control of being able to make this high res or low res. Um, but I've also got 
a fairly lowish lean model, which I can easily control in the future. So it's, um, it's a really good way of working. Okay, so that's that sharp edge there. What we're gonna move on to now is um, this next bit. So right now our model currently ends like right here. Um, so we've got to basically extrude a little piece out, but you can see that it drops down a little bit. Um, it goes like that. So um, how do we do that? Well, it just so happens that we actually have some loop cuts here to work with. So what we can do is we can actually just take this area here and extrude that outwards. Um, if we were to do this though, uh, we're missing the step down there because you can see there is a little step down there as well. So I'll add another loop cut. So let's add another loop cut, drop that down there. And you can see we've sort of got this, this box inside our box there, <laughs> which means that when I extrude and pull that outwards, that I've got that little step down like we do in the reference photo there. Um, cool, and let me just drag some stuff over because it is running out of room on the screen. Okay, cool. All right, so we extruded that bit out. Um, now let's, let's do another little step because we have to add another little step down here and then we're going to create the horn that goes out here. Okay, so there's a couple of ways that you can, you know, create that step. Like I mentioned it before, um, just grabbing the geometry that we, we'd already created from the edge loops. Um, but you can also do an inset. So I'm going to select this area here. And if I hit I, what that's doing is it's basically, it's the exact same thing as if you were to hit E to extrude and then just cancel its, you know, scaling or whatever, and then scale it into itself, it would be doing this. Okay, so that, that is an inset, what you're looking at right there. Um, and the cool thing about the inset tool is if I just undo that, when you're in this inset mode, you can see how we've got uh, that border there, like we've got it insetting there, which doesn't really work when you've got the mirror modifier, because now if I was to extrude this, it's created two separate pieces. So I don't want this area right there. So what you can do is when you're in the inset position, uh, inset mode, <laughs> just hit B. Okay, and that will eliminate the boundary. And the, the shortcuts for all these things, they're listed along the bottom bar there when you're in that mode. So you don't have to remember that one. You can just look in the bottom bar there. So it is B, B. Okay, so I'm gonna click. That's there. So I've got one little step down. And now I'm gonna extrude this out to however long I want the horn to be. Okay, so that looks, does that look about right? Looking at the reference photos, um, it does. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, cool. So to make the horn that shape, we obviously, we want this top bit to be flat. Oh gosh, what a horrible line. <laughs> From there to there, that that's flat. So basically this part here is gonna stay where it is, but this bottom bit is obviously curving up. So if we were to just grab those and pull that up, you can see we're missing some extra geometry there. So I'm gonna add a loop cut and then I'm going to uh, increase the scroll wheel. Uh, increase the scroll up, I guess what it's always called. Um, and yeah, once I got two, I'm gonna click and then right click to cancel its movement. And now I'm gonna do exactly like what we did over here. Remember when we made this whole section there, right? Gosh, that's horrible. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select this bottom part. Um, yeah, make sure you've selected both of the vertices there. I'm gonna turn on proportional editing by hitting O. And then if I pull this up, you can see for one, the exact same problem we had over on the other side. We don't want this top position to move. So I want that to stay where it is. So I'm just gonna hide it by hitting H. And now if I take this and I pull this up, I can now uh, create that curve, but the curve is in the wrong direction because it is at the spherical fall off, right? The one you're gonna use is sharp and you'll get better at just identifying and knowing which one to use. Um, but yeah, so it's basically because it's the very tip here, which is pointed. So, all right, I'll pull that up to about there. Lovely, and I'll bring back the rest of my mesh by hitting Alt H. Okay, so that's where it was um, before. And now, um, because I pulled that up, like we, we wanna pull this this bit in. So basically just wanna grab that and pull it in. Normally you would go something like this and scale it, but because we've got the mirror modifier, scaling doesn't work that way. It's not the way that you would expect. So what you need to do instead is just pull those into itself. Um, and because I've got clipping turned on, 
when I pull that into itself, this line here is just stopping right where they're touching, essentially. Um, and that is good. So from the top, it looks good. From the side, it looks good. And we are good. Let me get a quick drink here. <clears throat> All right, 10 minutes, not bad. Um, so um, now we can create a couple more edge loops. So I'm gonna create one right here to make this edge sharp so that it's only going from there to there to there instead of all the way to there. And then I'll create another one here like that. Okay, so I've now sharpened up those two edges. Oh, and I'll make one here as well, which is good. And then I want another one here because otherwise it's stretching it all the way from there to there. So that doesn't look very good. So I'm gonna add another loop cut right there and drag that back. Cool, all right, so now it's looking pretty good, but you can see that this area here is really rounded because we haven't got that loop cut like we had here, okay? So let me show you how we would do that. So we would just add a loop cut, right? Um, and I'll pull this across like you would, like we did before, and then I'll add another loop cut right here, okay? Just like what we did over here, okay? So that's given us the extra geometry, whoops. It's given us the extra geometry right here so that it's now just make it a sharp edge. However, look at what we've done to our horn. Our horn suddenly has something that we don't want, right? Which is extra, we don't want that edge on our horn, okay? So this is a problem that I created deliberately because you come across this a lot when you're modeling something. Like you'll be modeling a car and you'll think like, oh, I need to add an edge loop here to sort of make this edge sharp. But you don't realize that as you were hitting, um, like, oh, go back, back, back. A as you hit control R, and you pull it up, right? When you finally zoom out, you realize that that edge loop goes all the way around your model. And now you've got a sharp edge where you didn't want there to be a sharp edge. So this problem is, uh, it's very common. Okay, so how do we fix this? Well, there's a couple of ways. The old way that I used to do it when I was learning was I would just grab these pieces and I would like pull them out. And then I grab this one and I would pull that out. And that does sort of round it, but then you've got this horrible, horrible edge that's stretching across there. And although it doesn't look like a problem right now, if you were to do sculpting or you wanted to rig this at some point, or even just create like a nice edge, um, that's gonna be a problem. Oh, my phone is ringing, one sec. Sorry about that, and that was the wife, old ball and chain checking up on me, no. Um, okay, but a better solution um, instead of doing that is to try to turn the edge loops in on themselves or try to prevent them from interrupting the parts of the mesh that you don't want it to. So th what we're trying to do is get rid of this edge across the horns here, okay? We want, the ho we want it here and it's okay even if it's here, but we don't want it to stretch out over here. So what can we do? Well, if you look, the solution is actually already here, okay? On our, our previous step. Uh, if we could get that to instead of splitting and going down here across the top, to instead turn down in on itself and connect to here like that, then this would remain the one single um, edge across the horn um, and we would still have that. So that's what we want to do right now. So. Um, how do we do this? <laughs> well, uh, the, the same method that I showed you in the first video, which is to, um, to select the edge that you want to move like this, do, 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 do. Mm -mm. click, click and click. And then finally click. Okay. Um, and then to double tap G and then pull it across like that. And then if we were to remove the doubles, removes the 11 vertices. Now you can see we've got rid of that edge loop across the, the top there, but we've still got it everywhere else, okay? By the way, someone mentioned in the comments um, that instead of doing that double tap G thing, that um, I could instead use the, oh, uh, dissolve edge or collapse edge. And those, those did work for that situation, uh, which is true. But uh, for this specific situation, we actually do want to do this because then we have an act actual control over where this line actually goes. So that's why we're doing it like this. Um, if we were to just remove this edge, 
like that and just type in it, uh, hit dissolve edge, then we wouldn't get it and we'd have to pull that up or whatever. Um, so I just prefer to just do this. And also I like seeing it, like there's something about when you just hit that and it says dissolve edge, you sort of like have to reorient yourself as to like what exactly happened with my mesh. But here it's very easy to see because you can see it moving. Anyways, so remove the doubles there. Um, and there we go. So we, we do have this little mess here, but this is very easily fixed because that's, that's the four points. So we're fine there. Um, if we just hit F, it will automatically eliminate the two triangles and just make one face out of it. So, um, oh yeah, we have to do the same thing down here. So first of all, add in one edge loop down there. Did I not have an, I didn't have an edge loop down there, did I? Okay, all right. Well, creating one now. Grab this and all the way up there. And now double tap G, pull that down, clear it. And now hit F to make a face out of that. And there we go. So this is, you know, you might think this is a very unique case, but this is the sort of problem solving that you constantly need to do when you're modeling something. Um, because as I mentioned, nobody knows, no modeler knows, despite how good they are, how they're gonna approach something until they get to it. And they start realizing that, oh man, this edge loop, which I need for the car's you know, trim, wraps all the way around the tail light. And now when I make it sharp, it makes this horrible edge on the tail light or something. That's just something that you, you notice and you have to overcome it as you go. And you'll get a lot better at it. And at the start, you know, you will feel a little bit incompetent and like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, just make mistakes, break things, <laughs> as Mark Zuckerberg's famous, uh, what do you call it, philosophy? <laughs> Move fast and break things. Um, but yeah, you, you'll, you'll pick it up as you go and you'll learn by watching more and more tutorials as well on how different modelers approach different things. And you'll be like, oh, I didn't think of that. You can do that, you can do this, whatever. Anyways, so that's it. We have solved that little problem there. Um, and we have, yeah, I think we're going to leave the recording here because I, otherwise I go too long for these videos. But uh, yeah, we made this edge here sharp, which is great. I guess we could make this one at the very edge. We could make that sharper as well. And there we go. Now we've got the entire top edge sharp where it needs to be. It's curved where it needs to be. We fixed a problem. Um, in the next video, we're going to be creating more edge loops here to make this edge completely sharp as well as this edge around here. And we're also going to do some more fixing, um, which doesn't sound thrilling, but it is very helpful to, uh, to know this stuff so that when you get to fun stuff later on, you're modeling a rifle or something like that, you know how to, uh, how to problem solve. That's the idea anyway. So go ahead and join me in the next video. Oh, give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well. Got to ask that or else you know, it just doesn't happen. So anyway, click the next part. Which way is that? That way. Bye.